Good morning, afternoon, or evening. And if you're watching this in the middle of the night, welcome back to the Wednesday News Show. I'm Teresa Corti, and this week I'm a bit lonely, but that's for an excellent reason, because Hugo is working away on something real special. So let's start off with some good news. Since a crag in Crete has been declared a monument of natural and cultural heritage, then in Switzerland, Niki Ceria needed 22 crash pads to send the boulder. And of course, we bring you all the action from the Salt Lake City World Cup. And stay tuned for the latest update about all your favorite climbing gear that you can find on the Epic TV shop. Hello! Did you watch the comp this weekend? If you didn't and you want to watch it and you want to avoid any spoilers, then skip this section. If you want a quick recap and the highlights, then keep on watching. The third Boulder World Cup of the season took place this weekend in Salt Lake City, in Utah. So let's hear the highlights. The women's bouldering podium was a copy-paste from 2021. Brooke Rabatou had a bit of a shaky start, but flashed the last boulder, securing her a bronze medal. French climber Ariane Berton entertained the crowd, showing off her dynamic skills and not afraid of committing moves, she climbed up to silver. This event was a strong comeback for Natalia Grossman, who in front of her home crowd flashed all the boulders besides boulder number two, which only took her two attempts. In the men's round, it was the first senior boulder final for Toby Roberts, representing Team GB. One of his standout moments came on boulder three, a slab climb that required patience and careful technique. He approached the climb with remarkable composure, taking his time to navigate the subtle footholds and maintain his balance. His controlled and methodical approach paid off and got him a bronze medal. At just 16, Sorato Anraku, representing Japan, made a remarkable impression. He topped all four boulders, but not as fast as the Moa Narazaki. Fresh from a silver medal in South Korea, he delivered again with an outstanding performance, where he got the gold medal by flashing two boulders and other two he climbed quickly just in two attempts. Let's hear more from our foreign correspondent, Matt Groom. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Now, first of all, please go and watch the paraclimbing competition. The athletes are incredible, it was a good comp and it's free on YouTube and they deserve your support, so no reason not to. Okay, bouldering action. And Natalia Grossman, just wow. She had a tricky start to the season. In Japan, she didn't make finals. And I know that psychologically that was quite difficult for her to deal with. She's used to making finals and that disappointment was, well, she's not used to it. So she had to bounce back from that. And then in Seoul, she had a real nasty whiplash injury. We actually have it on camera, but we never released it because it is so horrible. But nasty injury that she was clearly struggling with. So to go away and came, come back in the way that she did in Salt Lake is so impressive. She was back to her usual self, flashing everything and qualifying, semis, and then taking just five attempts on four boulders in the final. She looks like her old self again. She was smiling, happy, and just brilliant. Now everyone's talking about what could happen between her and Yanya Gambre if Yanya returns in Prague. Now, of course, there are other athletes as well. I mean, Brooke Rabatou's won gold, Miho Nanaka, but we haven't seen Yanya yet. And of course, last year, everyone was talking about the rivalry between Yanya and Natalia, but Yanya didn't compete. So it is a mouth-watering prospect. And for the men, Serato Anruku, he is very, very special, mainly because he just killed everything in the semi-finals. He flashed boulders that no one else could even touch. And coming into the finals, he was the favorite, but Tomoe Narasaki stood in his way. And myself and Megan were joking during the live stream. It was a bit like a Disney film. You know, like the old king having to fight against the young upstart. Of course, Tomoe isn't that old. He's only 26, but you know what I mean. And Tomoe just had a bit more experience on the day. He held it together and he took that victory. But keep an eye on Serato in the future. Another one to watch out for is Toby Roberts. A medal in his first ever Boulder final. He used to be a lead specialist, but now he's definitely doing both. And I wouldn't bet against him qualifying for the Olympics and potentially getting a medal there, but we'll see. Lots of time to go. We're off to Prague next for the next Boulder World Cup. Is Adam Ondra competing? I have no idea. We'll find out. See you soon. Thanks, Matt, for that update. And the next Boulder World Cup will be in Prague. So back in Europe, and let's go on to some 9B news. The renowned Swiss climber Cédric Lachat has successfully completed the first ascent of Fantasia in the Vercors. 
Originally bolted by Roman Jondi, Fantasia is an extension to an existing 8B plus route. After a knee bar rest, Lasha climbed an additional 26 moves, including a challenging 7B plus boulder, before reaching the anchor. In an interview with Fanatic Climbing, Lasha describes the route as the most arduous climb he has ever undertaken, leading him to suggest a grade of 9B. However, he also pondered whether the route might be slightly easier for taller climbers, due to the required reach. There's a new 9B for the 9B counter, which somebody suggested last week that we should write it on a chalkboard that I have here next to me. We could do that. Will we do that? Maybe when we have some downtime, we'll update the 9B counter on the chalkboard, but that's not a bad idea. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Of course, that's it. Why didn't I think of it before? Next up, some bouldering news, and uh, it involves crash pads and a lot of them. Italian climber Niki Ceria recently reported on Instagram that he made the first ascent of Ghost of the Navigator in Valle d'Aosta. Ceria discovered the line in 2001 and spent four days working on it, not including the additional time he spent cleaning the boulder. To climb this highball, Ceria used 22 crash pads, taking him over 30 minutes to strategically position them. While Cheria has completed numerous boulders graded around 8C or 8C+, he refrained from assigning a specific grade, stating that the line incorporates elements of bouldering, highball, and trad climbing, defying a single grade classification. In Russia, Vadim Timonov has achieved an impressive milestone in his bouldering career. He recently completed Black Flip, Sit, and proposed a grade of 8C+, slash 9A. Timonov dedicated three trips over a month to send this boulder. Acknowledging the significant leap from 8C to 8C+, Timonov addresses the grading of Black Flip Sit. I have tried a lot of 8C plus boulders and also attempted a 9A, so I have something to compare it with. I understand the skepticism and concerns about the grade. I carefully considered before committing to it, drawing upon my extensive experience of attempting challenging routes worldwide. 22 crash pads for a boulder problem. Where did he bring them from? How did he just logistically, how did that work? I wish we knew more about it, but there's an extended interview with Nikki on 8a.nu. Congratulations to Vadim on that first scent as well. Right, next up, let's move on to some news that I forgot what I'm talking about. No, I'm talking about Meru, but not the movie, the new first scent on the South Face. Breaking news in the world of mountaineering, as European climbers Simon Gaitel, Mathieu Menadier and Roger Shiley have successfully opened up a new route on India's Meru south-facing wall. Shiley and Menadier, with Sean Villanueva, previously attempted this route back in 2019, but had to turn around on the upper third of the wall. This year, despite initially unstable weather, which eventually allowed the team to acclimatize, the abundance of snow benefited their expedition as they could reach the wall's base on skis. Their ascent was a pretty epic adventure. They even discovered a large ice tunnel, creating a unique pitch for their ascent. Staying on theme with the other route on Meru, they called it Goldfish and has difficulties up to M6 plus, A1. To read more about their adventure, check out the article on planetmountain.com. Congratulations to the team, and let's move on to the 9B counter. So Cedric gets three points on this year's counter. Are you looking for a new hangboard or shoes made in Italy or some banana boots for your stinky climbing shoes or sweaty climbing boots? We got them. We got them all in stock this week on the Epic TV shop. We got a big restock of Scarpa and La Sportiva. What I want to draw attention to you this week is the Lattice mini bar, and we have a big restock on all Lattice products, so check out the Epic TV shop for that. But this mini bar is uh, kind of cute, that's why I wanted to show you, but it's, uh, you might just say it's a you know, small piece of wood with a string. But Lattice comes with a lot of climbing content and a lot of training content, and also 
a video tutorial on how to use this and all its different grips and how to properly warm up on it. I found the video pretty uh, useful and interesting. It's just like two minutes and a half, so everybody has time to watch it. And uh, yeah, it's 150 grams, so it's not like heavy to carry around in your crack bag. And uh, yeah, you can find it on the Epic TV shop and I'll put this in properly. Next up, we've got some Epic TV media. And we've got an exciting episode this week from Studio Block. Hey Topisco, che cosa? This is not the start, come on. So you're also a judge on this competition? Yes, I am. James, <laughs> any pro tips for a person that just signed up for the first time to their first open comp, how to win slash get into semifinals? I, I don't know the, the recipe to win, you know. I won once, but uh, not every time, you know. There's no like a special recipe. What was the recipe that time? Luck. Hey, Victor. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, good, you? Long time no see. Yes. I have something for the people. For the people. Always go up, just up. Upwards, every time. Just go up. That's what, how... what if it's a traverse? No, no, no. It always wants you to go up, somehow. It, cause down, I mean, down is the ground, you know? It's a traverse, like you said, but if you're too low, you can't hold the hold. You have to be up. All right, pro tip. Think oh, about always it. Always up. Always up. Always up. Okay, up is better than down. Yes, sir. Is this your first competition? Yes. How is it going? How many points do you have? Uh, I have four tops. I have five tops. We might see you in finals then. Uh, no. <laughs> that was such a fun competition to go to. I hope it came across in the video how cool it is that, well, I guess ordinary climbers can climb next to like World Cup winners. A super cool event. Thank you so much for having us. And the next clip that we're gonna show you is from Japan. It's our like second 48 hours that we filmed. So here's the clip. Climbing with Tomoa was intimidating. This is uh, another level. That was so... That was, <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> that was <laughs> That was so cool, dude. Nice. So that's why Hugo is missing this week. He's at home editing away and putting subtitles uh, to this 48 hours with Ryuchi. And uh, there's also like a new apparel shoes in this video. So that's why we couldn't release it until now. So for everybody that was waiting for this episode, it's coming out next Tuesday on Climbing Daily on the 30th of May because that's next Tuesday. So if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe so you won't miss it. So we have to sing, but there's no we, so I won't sing comment of the week. My comment is from Tom Speltich, Speltinich. It's a really not long comment, so I won't read it all. He says some constructive feedback about blah, 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 mics, uh, big, ugly mics. <laughs> so when we did the news show last week, yes, we do have like some bulkier microphones, but apparently they're better for the sound. But this week I'm wearing a little lapel mic that I'm touching right now. So that might have been annoying. Anyway, so yes, we've, uh, we take on your comments and try to make improvements. I'm um, holding this cause I hope that I can take it home with me even though probably you'll say no. But uh, that's it for the new show. See you next time, guys.